So I'm continuing the teardown, and as you can see, I've removed several other parts, and I'll go through them here in just a moment. Um, what is unusual about this, and something that most people don't ever get to see, are some of the original pieces that fit underneath the car. It actually comes in three pieces, the left, center, and the right. Um, and they're held together by bolts all along the front edge. There must be 20 of those things. But I don't get to see them very often. And here in the center is where the lifting point is. And then these two holes are cut out for the tow hooks. And there's the inner fender shield. Uh, once again, just drill out the clips and replace them. Um, I also pulled the throttle body and the battery tray and the windshield washer bottle underneath that. Just disconnect the uh, sensor right here. That's really the only thing you have to worry about. And then uh, on the throttle body, of course, later on we'll check the uh, TPS sensor and the uh, ISC servo for proper homage and uh, the SAS screw is properly set. I don't like messing with a bisque screw if there's no vacuum leak, so uh, I'm going to leave that till the end. I don't think there's any vacuum leaks, so uh, we'll leave it alone. If you really have problems with your throttle body, you got a lot of vacuum leaks, uh, I just suggest sending it to April. The best 671. Uh, she does a great job and she'll even polish them for you if you want. But she has all the military spec grade seals. Here's a fuel filter, as you can see. That probably looks like the original fuel filter to the car. Um, there's two bolts that hold it on. You see the little rubber grommets. But I suggest leaving those on first and tackling the uh, inlet line here. That's a 19 millimeter. Put an end wrench on that, which is welded to this pipe so you don't want it turning. Then on the other end will be a 14 millimeter, um, which you'll have to uh, use a line wrench on to get loose. Um, I suggest some WD-40 and or some PB blaster and let it sit overnight or two or three just so you don't twist any hoses. The factory fuel lines come with this protective sleeving on them. Um, it's actually pretty brittle. The hoses inside them are actually still in pretty good shape. So I'm probably just we're just going to try to save them and then I'll replace the fuel lines uh, with a stainless steel line and uh, a regular fuel line for the return. Um, I also pulled the uh, radiator and I pulled it all as one unit with the fan so that's not really that difficult to do. Um, one caution I do want to make, um, over the years Mitsubishi has made several different styles of petcocks and there's this one on this car. It's plastic. Um, I had no trouble getting it out and the seal on it actually even stayed intact. So plastic ones are actually a little better since they don't tend to rust up. But on my car, if I remember correctly, it's all metal, and uh, they tend to rust up, so I try to leave them alone. Um, I would just drain the radiator by coming over to this lower radiator hose and either disconnecting it, and if you're not trying to save the hose, then just cut it right there and let it drain by itself. It'll save you a lot of trouble uh, messing with a petcock that's rusted in and won't come out. I wind up having to do a lot of monkeying around just to get it up and running again. So here are the two fans. Uh, on the later gens, there's a plug here and a plug here. They're color-coded once again on the later models. On um, some of the NAs, there may be two plugs here and one or two plugs here. And there might even be a couple of sensors down in the bottom, a black and white one for high and low temp switch for the fans. So uh, just be aware of what car you're working on and uh, follow the service manual. I always encourage everyone to do that because this is not the end-all be-all installation instructions this is just telling you what to look out for tips and tricks and some of the things that you might fall through but uh, I doubt many people have to take those shields off uh, seems to be the first thing the mechanics throw in the trash uh, once they take them off so uh, it's a shame but it's the reality of the thing they just are too lazy to put that kind of stuff back on and off on the car uh, you can see the radiator has been pulled uh, so now I can get the shield off the exhaust, something else that doesn't seem to be on a lot of cars anymore. And if you look real carefully right there by the dipstick tube, you can see the O2 sensor. So once I get these shielding off, I'll be able to get that removed. Uh, I've also PB blasted all these nuts and bolts and the O2 sensor to get them soaking. The radiator's going to just give me that much more space. 
uh, to get to the alternator and the air conditioner. So you come across here, you see all the intercooler piping has already been taken off, the intake piping. Um, I did pull the battery tray and that gives you access to the uh, fuel filter which the return line is right here and then the supply line that goes up underneath into the filter is right here. So just be careful with those fittings. Um, so we're slowly making progress. Um, not sure how much work I will get done today, but uh, that's the status so far. I hope everyone had a uh, wonderful Christmas and that their New Year's Eve party is safe and everyone has a good time. So stay tuned uh, and we'll uh, get this thing sorted out. Happy holidays. Oh, P.S. Um, in the last video we took the fuel rails off and I pointed out where they were. Um, if you look on the fuel rails, there are four bushings that go on the fuel rails. And let me see, I think they're in this bag. And you want to be very careful with these bushings. So when you pull those fuel rails off, don't just yank them off straight up. What you want to do is you want to leave them in place and then just gently lift up one bar at a time. They go right here. And so when you lift the bar up, lift up one side at a time very gently and pull these out first so they don't fall down into the engine valley. Be very careful. You could tape them up if you're really uh, unsure and tape them to the fuel rail if you feel uncomfortable doing this. But just lift them up gently on one side, leave the other one where it is, pull the isolators out, don't drop them. And then do the same on this side. Just lift the bar up gently and pull the isolators out. You don't want to lose these. They're hard to track down and you're not going to find them at your local AutoZone. So just another helpful tip and we'll continue the work later. Happy holidays.